Hi everybody, this is the final video for Unit 9 Stoichiometry with how to calculate percent yield using limiting reagents. So percent yield is how good of a job you actually do in your experiment. So the best way to explain this before I talk about the two types of yield is by making cookies again. So let's say your recipe, if you have one recipe for chocolate chip cookies and you were supposed to make two dozen cookies, you would assume then that you would make all two dozen cookies. However, let's say that you accidentally um, dropped some batter on the floor or you just couldn't resist and you ate some of the dough. Um, you are not going to make all two dozen cookies if you lose some of your batter. Same thing with when we are doing chemical reactions. If we don't um, properly do all the steps or we lose some of our reactants along the way, we're not going to make as much as what we think we would make. So percent yield, our goal for any reaction that we do is obviously 100%. This is different than percent error. Percent error, we want a 0% error. We did that at the beginning of the year. But now we're figuring out how much did I make versus how much should I have made. So every calculated stoichiometry conversion that we do is what we call the theoretical yield. That is, if we do everything properly in a reaction, this is how much we should create in a maximum. The actual yield is what we actually recover in the lab. Error can lead to higher and lower yields. Um, obviously, if we drop product, um, if we don't properly clean, or the very act of transferring a lot of times can cause us to lose some product. And sometimes we can actually have higher yield. A lot of times this is going to be the addition of water. If we, if a step would require uh, drying in between and you don't properly do that, you have excess water remaining, or if you have any other impurities, that can cause our actual yields to be greater than expected as well. The way we calculate percent yield is we take the actual over the theoretical times 100. So if we were just doing, let's say my actual yield was 10.5 grams and theoretically in a reaction I was supposed to make, let's say 12.7 grams. Okay, plugging those two values in, it should not seem difficult mathematically. We just divide those two values, multiply by 100, and we would see that we would have an 82.68% yield. Okay, so if I give you the actual and theoretical, it's as simple as just dividing those two values. However, using stoichiometry problems, a lot of the times you don't always have those amounts initially, so you have to first find what your theoretical would be, and then you can do this math to it. Okay, so here's how you find percent yield. The first thing is to balance the chemical equation. If you don't have the equation balanced, you have to first do that. Then you have to find the limiting reagent only if needed, if you're not told what the um, amount is. So sometimes you don't have to find the limiting reagent because they only give you one. So I'll show you that in an example. The next part is determine the theoretical yield. So this is doing a stoichiometry conversion. At number four, you have to find the actual yield. This is either in a lab, so ideally if we were in the lab setting, you would have that, or this will be given in the problem, and then you calculate the percent yield. So you have to always go through these five steps before you can find percent. So we're going to do two practice problems. The first, um, I'm going to give you the production of ethanol reaction, and um, we're going to talk through this process from start to finish. The next one, I'm going to shorten it up and actually give you what the theoretical and actual should be. So that way you can see kind of both ways. So this uh, reaction already gives you a balanced chemical equation. And I tell you if 75 grams of methanol, or sorry, carbon monoxide. So if I have 75.0 grams of this reacts to produce methanol, what is the percent yield if the amount recovered in the lab was 68.4 grams? So this is the actual. This is the actual CH3OH. So in order to find the percent yield, I need to know the theoretical amount of my methanol, which I do not give you in this problem. But if you notice, I give you the 75 grams of CO. So if we look back at these steps, I have the balanced equation. I don't need to worry about the limiting reagent. That's because I only give you one amount of the reactants. 
if instead I told you 75 grams of carbon monoxide reacts with 5 grams of hydrogen, then you would need to go through the limiting like what we did before. But we can just assume the hydrogen is in excess, so we don't have to do limiting. The next part then, and this is what we'll have to do, is number three. Determine the theoretical yield of whatever is given. So in this case, we want to find theoretical yield of methanol. And then the actual yield is given. That's the 68.4 grams, and then we can calculate it. So basically, we're going to do a gram-to-gram -gram conversion going between the methanol, or the carbon monoxide, sorry, which is A, and I want to find grams of methanol, which is B. So this is back what we did the first couple videos. So we are going to start with the 75 grams of carbon monoxide, and we're going to go to grams of methanol. So the first thing you need is molar mass. I'm going to give you the molar mass of carbon monoxide is 28 grams. It's actually 28.01 grams of CO for every one mole. Okay, so that's the first part. Grams cancel. After that, then we run into the mole ratio. Again, we get that from the coefficients. And for every one mole of carbon monoxide, we produce one mole of the methanol. So it's a one-to-one -one ratio. And then I know that one mole of methanol is equal to its molar mass, which is 32.01 grams. So if I just take my 75 times my 32.01 divided by 28.01, I get a total mass of methanol to be 85.70 grams, CH3OH. Now, that is what I calculated, so this is what we call the theoretical yield. If we were to do this reaction, everything was perfect, we should produce 85.7. However, I tell you the actual yield is 68.4. So now we're going to plug that into my percent yield. We're going to plug in the 68.4 grams over the 85.70 grams, and we're going to multiply that by 100. When we do that, we get a 79.8% yield. And that is my answer. All right, this next problem is just another example of that. Um, this one is giving you that you have 2,000 grams of this, um, what we call quick, um, the production of quick lime by taking calcium carbonate and roasting it, roasting limestone. I don't know why my pen isn't working. There we go. I'm going to go ahead and say um, when we do this reaction, and if we were to do grams of the calcium carbonate, two grams of calcium oxide, we should produce theoretically. 1,120.59 grams. Okay, so that's my theoretical. So if you were to do a gram to gram conversion, I'm just going to go ahead and shorten that, and that is your theoretical mass of calcium oxide. So I tell you the actual yield of calcium oxide recovered is 1,050. So the percent yield would be my actual 1,050 grams over the theoretical, which you calculate. times 100, and when you do that, you get a 93.7% yield. So again, sometimes you could just be given the theoretical. Um, if you're not given the theoretical, you have to calculate that, but just for the video length, um, I wanted to shorten that up for you. Um, it is possible that you get over 100% yield, so just make sure you watch out for that. And if you are not giving limiting reagents, you would first have to find your limiting and then plug that in.